PAD stands for peripheral arterial disease and it's a condition that's widespread in America and through a lot of developing countries. In a nutshell, it means that your extremities, typically your feet and your legs, are not getting enough blood flow. In its simplest definition, that's what it means. So it's peripheral, meaning your legs or your feet, arterial, and the arteries are the things that take blood from your heart down to the feet, disease. So it's disease in the arteries that are taking blood down to your legs. That can be caused by either narrowing or blockages that can exist anywhere basically from the heart down to the toes, anywhere in that pathway. And if there's a narrowing or a blockage that's severe enough, the patient will experience that as PAD. The disease starts actually for most of us when we're quite young, but it can progress until it reaches a point where it's causing symptoms. Those symptoms usually start with pain in the legs when you walk or exercise. So a typical patient will tell you they have pain in their calf, uh, one side or both sides when they walk three or four blocks. And they'll come in and say, well, just for the last couple of months, every time I walk three or four blocks, my calf hurts. And if I rest for a couple of minutes, it gets better and it feels like a Charlie horse. That's how a lot of people describe it, like a muscle kind of pain. So that's the most typical uh, initial symptom for PAD. If left untreated and if the disease progresses and if the patient doesn't change anything and, and it gets worse, then it will continue on to where the patient will complain of having pain all the time, even when they're not resting. In its most severe form, patients will tell you, Doc, I wake up at night because my foot hurts so much that I have to get up and dangle my feet. And what's occurring is the simple gravity, the pressure of gravity, makes just enough of a difference that it'll stop their foot from hurting, but when they lie down flat, their feet hurt. So that's how tenuous or, or subtle the, the blood flow changes are. And if you're having those type of symptoms, that's a real uh, red flag. You need to see someone right away. The first thing that happens when someone comes in, and, and let's start with the first example. Let's say they're having pain in their calf when they walk or when they exercise. Uh, that's not quite as critical of a situation, and we'll try to have the patient, uh, we, we test for it by measuring their blood pressure in their legs, and if we're suspicious of PAD and their blood pressures are normal at rest, then we check the blood flow before and after exercise, and you can often see a pretty big drop-off. So these are patients who are fine when they're sitting on the sofa, but they're not fine when they're at the grocery store. If uh, patients, uh, so for really for any patient, that's the first line of diagnosis is measuring blood pressures in their feet and look using an ultrasound uh, to really look at the arteries and measure the flow and the pressures going down to the legs. If uh, we progress beyond that and we think the patient really needs an intervention and we're concerned and we need to kind of move the process along of restoring blood flow, the next step is some type of imaging study. And again, this will vary from patient to patient, either a CT scan, an MRI, or uh, a conventional angiogram. We put a needle in a catheter and we put dye and take pictures of the arteries. There are a couple of classic examples that we use. One example is of someone who's unable to perform their job. Uh, and the, the example in textbooks is always, for example, a, mail, a mailman or a mail person who can't deliver the mail because they keep having to stop. That actually happens quite a bit. We have construction workers, uh, people who do um, even work in an office setting where they're walking around quite a bit and they really are debilitated by, by something like this. So that's someone who needs an intervention just so they can provide livelihood for their family. Um, if you're in a situation where it's a nuisance and you have pain in your calf, but it's not really a limb-threatening situation, we, we, we really try hard to do non-invasive treatment. Stopping smoking, changing your lifestyle, what we call a regimented or, or, or a moderated exercise program, where you try to increase your level of walking slowly over a period of weeks and months. You know, I always tell my patients, it took you 60 years to get to this point. We're not going to change it in a week or two. It's going to take you a long time to reverse that process and build new pathways around the blockages. But if you're in a situation where you can't provide livelihood for your family or your limb is threatened, meaning you have pain even at rest or you have ulcers or infections or gangrene, then obviously we move much more rapidly towards an intervention.
there are a range of options that we can offer. Most of it depends on exactly where their blockage is. So the imaging study really guides the therapy. And it depends on whether the blockage is uh, higher up or closer to the heart, or whether it's, uh, for example, across a joint space, like the hip joint or the knee joint. Those are very difficult areas in which to work because they're points where you're bending and, and flexing the artery. It depends on whether the blockage is in the thigh or whether it's below the knee. So it gets very technical, and it really depends on where the blockage is located as to what type of treatment we offer. Usually, we try to do minimally invasive options first, makes the most sense, and we try to use wires, catheters, balloons, uh, shaving devices, uh, a whole host of, of, of devices that we have, stents at, at our disposal, and if we can help patients with those, uh, everyone's happy. It's an outpatient procedure and, and patients will do pretty well with it. But sometimes that's just not possible or sometimes patients have failed those treatments and then we move on to conventional surgical bypass where we, uh, it's like a bypass that most people think of associated with the heart, for example. It's sort of like you're on the connector but there's a traffic jam and your blood's taking the small city roads around to get to, from the north side of the city to the south side of the city. That works, but it's slow because you can't go 60 miles an hour through the city streets. And so what we do is build a new highway that goes around the blockages. One of the advantages of coming to a place like Emory where we have a heart and vascular center is that we have people who really specialize in, in, in all of the entire range of possibilities in terms of treatment. So we have specialists who uh, work on treating blood pressure, which is an important component of, 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 of medically treating the disease. We have people who can help you with risk factor modification, with your diet, with exercise plans. And then we have interventionalists. We have uh, people who really are specialists in wire catheter technologies, and we have people who do a lot of surgical bypass, and then we have some people uh, who do both. I, for example, will do both types of treatment options and we're able to customize it uh, depending on what the patient needs and what their anatomy is. Research in relationship to PAD can be broken down into two large camps. One category is in terms of new devices, such as balloons, wires, shaving devices, catheters, and so on. These devices are used to treat disease that already exists. Because we have so many new devices, we can customize treatment to individual patients. Also, at places like Emory, we have access to new devices and trials that may not be available at other centers. The other category of research has to do with understanding the biology of, of the disease. Why does it, it exist in the first place? This is more in terms of medical treatment using cytokines, stem cells, and helping to treat disease without ever getting to the device stage, and helping to prevent disease, and helping your body treat the problem itself.